Good evening, dear friends. With uh, Christoph and Lars, we are here to, to show you how we love this music, to share our love this music with you. It's what I was saying to them when we were in backstage. Let's go and just tell to people how we love this music. And that's something for me very crucial, the love for the music. You know, the science explains the world with its own rules. Art is coming with other kind of rules to give its own evidence of what is about what we're living. So, love and life, it is for, for the musicians, is one uh, common thing that ex gets explained through the musical interpretation. So, um, first topic. Why... Um, what happens with the Ninth Symphony? It's a big conversation, but I would like to put in the table. What do you believe? What, what is happening? And people are afraid of the Ninth Symphony. We know that Beethoven died in the Ninth Symphony, Bruckner died in the Ninth Symphony, Dvorak, Schubert, and many people trying to cheat number nine, like Mahler, Sostakovich. Sostakovich successfully, Mahler not successfully. But is it something on that number? Is it something? Is it kind of a number of infinity, a number of God or something? Is something mystical on that? Or it is a coincidence? If it is a coincidence, why all the composers try to cheat? Music is something that we understand, half of, them, of, of that we understand and half of that we don't understand. So maybe the answer is in the part of the things we don't understand about that. What we are sure it is that um, we see, as an example, I remember Anton Bruckner, that he cannot finish his symphony, Ninth Symphony, and ends with the third movement. But this movement, actually, it is a finale. It is a transition to something else. It is a message for us to find another, um, an another vehicle to infinity. Not the moralistic one that, we, that gave us the enlightenment. There is a good, bad, black, white, and we play with all these um, narrow, uh, vocabularies to explain um, um, important things. So you see, like uh, it's not a coincidence that he was Bruckner was saying maybe you could play Te Deum as a finale. But uh, when I did the Ninth Symphony, I said that cannot be a romantic finale. Cannot be a kind of has to be continued. So I decided for a last movement to, to play a piece by Gheorghe Ligeti, the Lontano, that it is how this music sounds in another space. What is uh, very, for, for me, interesting, also to put in the table, I never understood why the people like this music. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't understand, because it needs a lot to be with this music and suffer with this music for starting to understand something. It is so complex. Today I was rehearsing with the orchestra, the first movement, and I was every bar insisting, playing, now you play with that person, now you need to do this line, now you need to come. 
for very fantastic musicians that they have played the symphony for many times. And every time we try, we open our ears and listen. It's very complex what is inside. And what is, when you open this complexity and you get in, what is inside? That's a real question. What we try, what these hundred people struggle to find in that music? Why the fight? Why they don't play a kind of music that opens the heart? And why you need to fight with your shadow all the time? These are questions. And to be honest, the composer wants it in that way. When you try to catch him in the white, he turns in the black and, and then he goes in the holes to find the transition in the wonderland of grief. Because um, um, there is a place that leaves the untouchable beauty. And this is this space of loneliness and grief that he has the possibility to weep alone without, um, in the place with nobody knows in the world, in the seat of the universal uh, emptiness. So the code is difficult to open, but if you once you open this, you will never forget that. If you will feel what it is in this music inside, if you have this click of illumination and opens the ceilings and you see what was about this music, then you will see what well, correct that all the people loving this music so much, but I still don't understand what they found to that music. Let's listen a little bit what Bruckner says. Play again the interval, how it starts. Important is an interval. And a little Tristan on his old day. Isn't it great? It is this introduction. It is a really magical introduction by Bruckner of the third movement. And it's very difficult. I tried very hard to imagine the fourth movement with the esquisse of Bruckner, but it was impossible. This is done by the faith and God to be the finale of the symphony. Listen to the beginning of the Mahler.
see there are a lot of similarities in the optical uh, layer, but they are completely different in the, in the spirit inside. For this music of the finale of the Ninth Symphony of Mahler, many people talking about this. And it is a kind of this, and the plate in a very proud and solemn way. This. I really don't understand what is the interesting thing with death. It's a thing that we don't know, first of all. We know that this is happening, but we don't know what it is, how is it is inside. And we surely know that this will happen. But how the music, what, why the music has to, to say about things that we don't know? What music can say about this, about death? I don't find any beauty to that in death. And not beauty and not beautiness. I don't find beauty in pain, but I found beauty in salvation. I don't find beauty in death, I find beauty in resurrection. I find beauty in life that I watch through this, uh, through this window. So for me, it is the beauty in the way that we understand that when we are in a very difficult moment in our lives. Everyone has been in a difficult moment in their life, and the touch of love in the remembrance or in people that we love and they love us, it is so essential in these moments, in the difficult and the tough moments of our lives. Also, when we feel that we are living this world, the beauty that we live, uh, uh, the simple things, the spiritual things, to say a good word, to give a help, to give a hope. These are, are the, the things that we uh, bring us in, in a position to give us power and in the same moment give us the sorrow because uh, we have to part with all these uh, important things. What Mother is doing why, um, you know, there is an ornament in music. Ornament is a kind of a decoration of four or five notes called gruppetto, all turn, or cadenze. Um, this is a kind of very typical way in the academic music from 18th century to our times, from the classic era, we have this kind of gruppetto till the post-romantic time, that very kind of... You, you, the, the composer used these notes to end the phrase or to, to connect an interval inside the, in the melodic line. And, of course, everybody, it is a kind of cliché uh, of beauty. Ornament like this, we know in the ancient, we had ornaments in uh, the, the temples, we had ornaments in the houses, we had ornaments in the graves also. For whom? It's a question. Ornament is a desire of the humanity to bring in a state of mind of the infinity um, the understanding of beauty. So uh, you see uh, this uh, gruppetto, then I said, if you see the symbol of the gruppetto, is the symbol of the infinity. Uh, maybe Lars or Christoph will give us some examples of different pieces, what is how this turn has been used in different. This.
this is a, um, a kind of um, some other example. There are thousands of, uh, of, of examples. Um, Mandler used this gruppet and builds the whole symphony, the whole movement with that. Just play the gruppetto. This you will meet in almost in bar after bar, you will meet it in different tempos, in different positions, and different tonations. As an example, how is this in um, fourth bar in the violoncello? And now, continue. Slow tempo, gruppetto. In fast tempo, the bass. The second violins. So you see, it is always in the polyphony. This gruppetto becomes a moment and reflects with each other and builds the dramaturgy and every time appears in a different character. The other thing that is very important is in the bar three, as an example in the position, we have this Liebewohl. So um, in Mahler, it sounds like this, the third bar. It's like That's all, all the time um, uh, this, uh, remember that. Is the game with the big intervals as is doing uh, Bruckner, the very first interval, one and. And the mother. Now to uh, bar 23 as an example to hear what is happening with the, with the positions, change the okay, and etc. And we have uh, also an important uh, place that for me is very essential. When Mahler tries to melt the diatonic system, he tries to find the tonality that is in between the white and the blacks. It's the, this, the intention of the glissando, as you see. And when you feel that, then you will feel how a new Era, a new tonality, a new frequency appears. Let's play in bar um, 13. It is this. <laughs> piano sounds like this in the strings it is uh, really really sustained and you feel uh, all the microtones between the um, the two the two notes one more time <laughs> Yeah. 
incredible trip through the, all these dimensions, the unknown dimension of our souls. So as these are actually the elements when everything is built in this. Now, um, we will try a little bit to explain what really touches us. Let's go to the exposition, the third bar. And play formal. Now it is a little bit all again. Listen, this is this little. what he meant. Now listen the wonder what is happening in the third beat that I will show when the change of the harmony and from this state he goes to a kind of in a different layer when there are different informations and then goes even deeper when it is this space of transcendental grief. So it is here. You see, this is the place. And then he continues. Ornament. See how he bleeds. Now, if we will play in a formal tempo, but to pay an attention and to jump to this color in the third beat, what would happen? that you will uh, go in tempo but change the color in the third beat without a delay. And now, listen, after we fall in this dimension in the third beat, comes the fourth beat with a dissonance that give us a, a kind of pain inside, this salvation that there is in this harmony, that a pain comes in. Listen. Ornament here. Listen to this uh, beautiful interval, it's in bar eight, without uh, the direction that we have before, bar eight.
mm. one more time, even tender, make it more dramatic. You will see it will not be dramatic at all. They will try very hard, but it will not be. Make it. Maybe dramatic is if we would play really tender pianissimo. So, um, even the pianist, we change the colors. I try now to give colors to this, to touch, but it doesn't touch it. And now you will see why. <laughs> this is an imitation of the interval that I will tell you. How we can imagine in that place just being your knee, on your knees and praying for somebody else, or saying thank you, thanking somebody else. How can work this phrase like this? Listen, in the previous bar of that, we have two transitions and two kind of harmonic uh, modulations that then bring us to that place. And only through this journey of these two dimensions, of the two layers, this salvation and this Praying will work. Let's play one bar before. Okay. One more time, go in tempo, and only before that moment that we need this only before that slow down a little bit and just change the color Listen how this works with the connection from the beginning, all this story. See, it's a whole journey in some, it's just a little bars of music that it is this exposition, a big journey. Now, from another world that there is not a more, there are in, in a world of um, 
of the unknown world, of the world of this not, that is not transcripted to our language, we have this. something like this. Something that comes from that Bach that was the only that knew the words here that he didn't say to anybody. Now I want to see how this mysterious part gets interrupted of this of immense power in this transcendental place of grief where is uh, no more morality. There is a happiness also in that grief. And there is freedom in chains, as Persil says. So I will play again this place and look how immediate and has to interrupt the strings of the orchestra. I have to interrupt this single, the song of the bassoon. goes to try and strive and goes to nowhere, again to that space, that there is no resolution. Listen to the third bar again. Let's go to the beginning. It's very important. Listen. Now let's go to... Flissant. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, let's go from, it's better from 17. This is the new, the, 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 A, the first variation in the exposition. <laughs> Now, 
DJ Harmony. How he... I want that you listen to how he gives this light of the, of the harmony and then how he returns what, of what he's interrupting. One before Flissant. Uh, two before Flissant. Yes. <laughs> This is the, the incredible game he plays with our uh, imagination. This is, let's do it in tempo. Uh, to be for Flissant. This, this is one of the most important pages for 20th century, for what we call contemporary music in our days. Play again etwas dringend from that place. Slow. Let's make, make it slow so we can listen all the... The interval. And now with the, uh, with the flow, it is like that. <laughs> This is a place that I can say with the first time when you listen to the symphony, it's interesting, first two, three bars, then becomes boring. That's the truth, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the truth now. Why it becomes boring? But it, because it's very difficult to follow this text, this unknown text. I will tell you one, I was telling before that Bach maybe was the one that knows these forgotten texts. Listen this in a fast tempo and tell me who is the composer.
will sing. Now you see in the, in the fast tempo, this makes a kind of sense. You can, if you can put it. Now, try to follow it in the slow tempo. When you see all the details in this slow motion, when you see all, all the details of this sacred place, It. Let it flow without anticipation to the tonality. Finally, we are out. Harmony.
breath. Very tender at the toes. Even more tender. Tender breath. He goes to the tone in a very different way as he goes in the other times. As you feel, this man it is very advanced, this composer, for having kind of understanding what means that and what is inside. It needs a lot of a lot of time to get in. I just want to demonstrate something to you. Let's play bar 79. Just continue. Now, let's, uh, let's see something that really interests me very much. Let's go back to bar 59. transition. He uses the interval and a variation of the gruppetto. One more time.
whom is this music and what he, he meant? I will tell you one story of, of my life that helped me a little bit to, to get in to understand. In the beginning of 90s, when I was studying in St. Petersburg, I had a friend who's a very interesting guy. Not from my world, but interesting people from other world um, is the people that they give you the most correct information about things. So um, once I was studying the Ninth Symphony, this movement, and I was trying to explain what, what it is inside in the, all these transitions. And he said, what, I know what you mean. I said, you really want what I mean? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. If you want to come tomorrow at uh, five o'clock in the evening, I will show you something. And we went to a train station. I thought it was um, Bitebski Vazal in St. Petersburg. And we get in five o'clock. It was springtime. And where are we going? I was asking him, come, come with me. We went, it was the rails for the trains, and then we went a kind of kilometer on the side. And we went in a kind of, in a place when it was closed already. It was an old station there, and it was closed. And it was um, empty. And there were rails uh, that uh, you could see trees on the rails. And there was a woman sitting and waiting. She had a kind of a Soviet coat, manteau, something like 30, 35 years old. She didn't have leave any tear in her body, so it was only the liquid of her blue eye coming out as a tear. She was, I was a kind of 15 meters, she was kind of like on the stairs, hiding. She was something, spelling, was waiting for somebody in a rate that nobody is coming any, anyway, and hoping and longing. I said, what is that? Is she... I, I don't know what happened. I don't know the story of this lady, but I know that she exists, and she's here every day. So every day, every day, when I wanted to, to find a conversation without knowing, she didn't know that I exist, I was hiding. I was going there and watching to this lady that was waiting in a, tra in a rail that no train will come anyway, and longing. I think maybe she didn't ever know what is this music, but she understands this music better than, than me, because that is what it's about, this music. So let's listen uh, this moment, how after the fight with our demons comes and resolution to that. This is in 69, this is in 70, 70 bar 70. I want, I want that you will play with a really rough uh, sound without... Um, you need to really to break your, your hands in the wall, fighting with yourself, with your shadow in that place. Really. <laughs> this ornament, this ornament that it was a beautiful ornament of our civilization, of our beautiful music, listen how it has to be here. And these chords, the third beats, the first beats, the half notes has to be like, like a, a knife in the heart. And only in that way, in the third bar, we will find the salvation. And we will... Pain is not something that we love, but it's something that because of pain, we know what is salvation. We will know salvation before, without pain. Really.
Cordelisa. Sleep on the other day is the same accompaniment with the quintet, with the triplets.
interrupting fragments. Forgets the language anymore. And only fragments, like in the dream, sometimes we try to talk, but we forget to talk. We cannot find words. Just uh, one motive and empty. But no, another fragment. The thing that wanted to melt the tonality comes back.
So you see these, uh, yeah. mm. in two words, um, to go back into our conversation, uh, you see how complex is this simplicity. You know, you, usually what is happening in the end, all the conductors are accelerating the tempo because they cannot stand this. It's very difficult. And I noticed this with myself. I was counting the eight faster. I said, no. And he insists, he said. He said, no. To the infinity, to the new language of music. And he uses elements, all the elements that he uses are not advanced, are usual, uh, are the bricks of academic music. There's nothing new in the orchestration, nothing new, nothing exotic. And with these bricks, he wants to, to say something that it is very hidden. It's like to find the truth in something that we see every day, not in something that we never saw. To see that uh, the wonder in life is, and the miracle is near us every moment, every minute. Miracle is not when somebody that is very ill, he gets back his health. It's that you visited him when he was in the hospital. That's the miracle. And then comes the other part, of the, the other layer of the miracle. It's the same with this music. And it is so difficult to perceive the need to live a lot with that. What he wrote in, in three months, we need three years for getting in and understand. I want to thank my friends that they suffered with me all this, <laughs> all this year, Christoph and Das. I'd like to thank you for um, your patience, understanding, and because I will repeat one more time what I say, the future of music is not if he's a good pianist and I'm a good conductor and he's a good cellist. It's not in that. It's when you will start 
deeply to understand what is in the music. Then the music becomes music. Otherwise, our paper, ink, and notes, and sounds, and hertz is not music. Music is when you start, open the space of understanding. Thank you. Have a good night.